is this fear genuine is there any reason to be afraid is it is it normal is it abnormal is there anything to fear about the COVID 19 pandemic from your research from a professional and academic perspectives COVID 19 you like you have rightly classified it it's nothing to be scared about but because of the way it has been presented to the people or the human race in general then there will be cause for people to be to be scared because a scare factor has been added to the presentation of COVID-19. Thank God you called it COVID-19. I thought you would say coronavirus. Then I will ask you some certain questions. But you have classified it. So what are we experiencing across the world? Is it coronavirus or coronavirus or COVID-19? So if you look at COVID-19 as a concept, I have told people it's nothing to be scared about. Nothing. Why are you because so sure about that? When you say something is a virus, and from all ramifications, all the scientific implications they have mentioned about it, does not obey basic scientific classifications, then you don't need to bother yourself about it. We are told it's as an organism. How can a virus be an organism? We are saying COVID-19 is affecting people. How is it affecting the people? What laboratory procedures or what protocol, what scientific protocol did you engage to now isolate and identify what you have classified as COVID-19? If I am sick and I go to a doctor and the doctor will ask certain questions, when doctor asks me certain questions, then he will, he will weigh the, 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 the information and will say, okay, fine, I suspect you have malaria. Then go to the lab. That lab he has sent you to is to confirm his suspicion. So what you do, when you get to the lab, they take samples. Basically, maybe blood sample. I'm not a lab scientist, but I know that there are procedures they now follow to isolate the microbes or whatever is resulting in malaria symptoms that the person is feeling. Let's take it back now to COVID-19. What are the symptoms they have found out in the lab? Hmm. All we hear is that two persons are positive today, 20, it has increased to 20 the next day. The other day, it is now 300. Fine. Then all of a sudden, after a day or two, you hear they are positive. When they are from positive, they go straight to negativity. They are negative. We have released them. What did you now do? Hmm. Under the isolation condition that they are using to scare everybody and keeping everybody at home. What did you do in, the, what did you do in that isolation center? What procedures, what scientific procedure did you prove on ground to now prove to the world that this is what we are experiencing? This is what is killing people. This is what is terrorizing every person. COVID-19 has more than we can see. There are a lot of information about it that we are not getting. And scientifically, I am, I am willing to be challenged by any person. Scientifically, it has failed all scientific principles in terms of classifying disease, either being virus or whatever it is. Okay, L let me pause you there. Uh, Professor Ajene, <coughs> um, COVID-19 from all available information, whether at home or abroad, is killing people in the hundreds of thousands, I mean, even in the millionaire, over 1.2 million deaths. In places like the United States of America, right. uh, in Italy, in Spain, the numbers are growing by the day. What is it about this virus that is making it to kill people at such a quantum number? So you are using two languages now, so permit me to go back to the background <laughs> of my colleague. <laughs> COVID-19, hmm. coronavirus. First and foremost, the COVID-19 is covered from corona disease. Yeah. COVID is corona disease. Mm -hmm. 19, it occurs in 2019. Yes. So let's get it clear. If it's COVID-19, that it begins in 2019, why is it killing people? First, can we go back to the origin of the COVID-19? People say, once you identify a problem, you can easily provide what? A solution. solution. We were told that it originated from where? China. Automatically, we know the source. How does it originate? Is it just a new virus that are just emitted? Are there a lot of virology, professors of virology everywhere? 
Yes. It goes to say that he kills people on a day, maybe hundreds on a daily basis. Those people killed or died as a result of coronavirus. What happened to them? For instance, our federal government has just said anyone killed by coronavirus will not be released. That becomes the work of pathologists. They go into it. What is the resultant effect if you are affected by COVID-19? Which area of the body does it affect and thus leading to death? We keep all hearing wrong. We are told it affects the respiratory system. Good. The Rest respiratory tract. Yes. Okay. What are your thoughts along those lines? Thank God I am an anatomist. Let's start from the respiratory tract. Even starting from where they said, from information available, like it leads to copious secretion of mucus. And the, the respiratory tract starting from the trachea, or the windpipe, as common man would say it, and the esophagus, they call gullet, they begin at the same spot, at the cyst cervical vertebra. The only difference is that the trachea is at the top, while the esophagus is below. Mm -hmm. They are being separated by what we call tracheosophageal groin. And information available says that if you secrete more mucus, which eventually leads to the blockage of the respiratory tract, and no human being can survive without oxygen. It shows that the oxygen going in into the respiratory tract, thus, via the respiratory tract to the lungs, is being stopped. And then the suggestion now is, if it's just mere mucus is secret, and we are also told also that we are being advised to take hot water, that is to show that once you take in the water, hot, warm water, it will flush it along the esophagus. Ordinarily, the pH value of stomach, which is acidic, will destroy it. Then that is a big, it's a, it's a solution. It's, it's, a, it's a big relief. It's a, it's a big relief. Yeah, yeah. Then the question now is, if pathology has even said it is at this respiratory system, and that it blocks the respiratory system such that you will not get more oxygen. Mm. The question now is, does it lead to secretion, uh, copious secretion of mucus that will lead to what? The blockage of the respiratory system? And if so, are there no drugs that can clear the respiratory or the airway? And yet we keep saying there's no solution. And even if currently in Nigeria, 33 persons have been treated and discharged, what medicine do they use? And I want to stand to say, all medicines are from where? The natural plants. I, I read a while ago that the idea thing is that that popular drug we usually use in the 70s called Agbo, whereby you cover with thin blanket, because it is on record that temperature above 30 can even destroy it. And so, when you cover Agbo, inhale it, both the respiratory and in your mouth, automatically that thing can equally what? Destroy it. And you are saying there's no solution to the problem? Okay. Let, 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 let me pause there because time is um, hmm. of essence. Uh, Prof, you, you, yes. you started by saying that um, even though it's a virus, that yes. a virus is not a living thing. No. So uh, how is this virus able to um, carry out such a deadly impact like we are seeing today? And you, saw, mm -hmm. you also added that there's more than meet the eye as far as this it pandemic is concerned. Why are you so sure about these things? Yes. <clears throat> When issues come up, then from people's reaction in terms of comments made and body language and all that, you should be able to get a clue to what is happening. I'm a genetist, and a genetist will know what we call forensic examinations and considerations of issues. If you look at the advent of the event of COVID-19, all the information that was given at the initial stage were made to convince the entire human race that this package that is coming is deadly. So a lot of components have been added to it. But the wrong thing that happened was that the initial informations were void of scientific proofs. Remember that there was even issues of publication stating that, yes, what we are experiencing as COVID-19 contains DNA and RNA. Yeah. And because of that, it's a living thing. When it enters the body, it's able to blow up, it's able to do this or that. I said, wow. But my surprise is such statements are coming 
even from World Health Organizations. That's what baffles me most. Let's look at it. You say something, because it contains DNA and RNA, mm -hmm. it automatically becomes a living thing. I have listened to several persons being questioned, and they will say, what is virus? It will say, small, small organism. How can virus be an organism? Virus are chemical component. The DNA and RNA that they see in virus is components of chemicals that have been joined together. They build together, they link up together to form a poisonous substance. So what it does is, it goes inside the system. It's like somebody, of recent you see on social media, a lady got frustrated and all she could do was to take sniper and she drank sniper. She didn't die automatically. It takes a while because those substance will find a way into the cell and start damaging the cell. Yeah. But the so-called virus in terms of coronavirus, COVID-19, does not have even a cell. So once a substance does not have a cell, there is no life in it. Because cell is the basic unit of but life. But it has genetic makeup. It does not have any genetic mm. makeup. Because once it is not living, it does not have okay. genetic makeup. The DNA they are talking about mm. is the Aussie ribonucleic acid. Mm. They are chemical substances. Yeah. But when you look at a cell, the DNA we talk about in cell are quite different from the DNA you talk about in non-living thing. Like a friend once called me on phone while these arguments were on and said, look, they said when it enters the body, it now acquires genes <laughs> from the system and acquires protein and now becomes living. I said, rubbish. I said, let me give you an example. Inside the fowl, when you look at the digestive system of the fowl, there is gizzard. And if you open the gizzard, there are a lot of stones inside. Why did those stones not absorb genes from the fowl and now becomes living? <laughs> living things and non-living things are different. Virus cannot undergo characteristics of living things. No. So it's not a living thing. So somebody has gone into somewhere to produce something. We have history. Even the coronavirus they talk about is not new. We know that in 1950s, Check the history of, of, of Han, Hanka, or what do they call it? That one just came up of recent, and they said it killed one Chinese. But I continue to wonder, why is all the virus killing Chinese at first? The India's case is always Chinese. That the first death came from Chinese, and all that, and all that. So let's go back to the, the, chem, uh, the genetics of it, because that was where they got it wrong. And God pushed them to now come out and use that genetic information to convince the people. But they never knew that there are genetics like us and scientists like us who come out to challenge the world about it. So fine is not a living thing. So it can hibernate in anywhere because it's a chemical substance. So when it goes inside the body, then it carries out its poisonous operations. We are talking of poison. We are talking of chemical substance. So like I told my friend, I said we are in means of chemical weapons. We are in means of chemical warfare. People have made several statements. Somebody has said the world is paying for what China did. But how many persons have asked him as a gentleman, say, gentleman, fine, millions, thousands of people are dying. You are saying the world is paying for what China did. What do you understand about what China did? Why can't the world even ask China, what did you people do? What was that preparation you made? Of recent, there is a professor that has been mentioned from Harvard University. A professor of chemistry who was arrested severally on one or two occasions and questioned and who was part of producing that chemical substance so if you now look at a chemical substance what i have told people is that we are so lucky when i say we i mean the whole entire world race because even they themselves that prepared it they are not mm -hmm. safe from it it's affecting them yeah. they even die more than we are yeah. okay fine if that preparation has been airborne, airborne. by now, Finish. half of the world would have gone. So, so it's that not airborne, is that what it's not no. airborne. Even World Health Organization has agreed that it's not airborne. That was but they, they said, said it's genetic, it's not no, genetic. They, they said initially that it wasn't airborne. But somewhere along there, I think I saw a publication where they said it's airborne. Yes, they yeah. said it's airborne because it has mutated. How can a non-living thing mutate? We are scientists. So they shouldn't take the word for granted and feel that there are no scientists in the world that, can, that would challenge them. 
of recent, I, I have even discovered that there have a lot of agents on all social media. Because I questioned one. Every day you talk about people that died. Like my colleague has mentioned. Somebody died. Bring the dead body. Okay. We want to carry out an autopsy to find out what killed that person. I independently. No, we are no, not talking no, of independent no. now. Okay. You can be a part of it because you are a journalist. Yes. Okay. You people report to the world. Okay. Like I've asked on, I, I asked one of the radio programs, during a radio program, I said, even as a journalist, when you people go out, what do you see? Today, 20 is positive. Next tomorrow, they are negative. Who are the persons? Where are they? What is their names? So when you carry out an autopsy, it removes all available doubt. Yeah of what has killed that person. When you post challenges on social media, there are response. Even from government sector, there are response. Even from World Health Organization, there are response. Let me mention one. When we posted that and said, let us know, give us one, let's know what has happened. Mm -hmm. You got some reactions, even from Nigerian government. How can somebody tell me that in Nigeria, where we have constitution guiding us as a people, that when somebody now dies, because it's coronary virus that killed the person, or COVID-19, they will not release the body to the family yeah. of the person. They are hiding information. And that is what the U.S. president has said. Number one, the world is paying for what China, China has produced. Uh -huh. Two, that China is hiding information about coronavirus or COVID-19. If you synchronize those information together, it gives us a headway that, uh, that there is a, a very crafty work being done somewhere just to destroy human race. And people are capturing it to it. Let me tell you, a farmer called me yesterday. <laughs> and this morning, he was the first person that called me. And his question is that, please, please, Prof, when you get to that program today, I know that you are coming for a program. Tell the whole world that I, as a farmer, am asking, why do we need Chinese doctors? Okay. In Nigeria, maybe to share because we to don't to have to time. To Let's to hammer to some of this to point to out to share experience with our experience of what when they could not take care of their people. Uh -huh. We are saying America is bringing aircraft to carry their people from Nigeria, but thousands are dying in America, America. and tens and less than tens are dying in Nigeria. Where is safer? Where is safer? Nigeria. Nigeria is safer. So why are they coming to take their people away? Thank God some of them have rejected that they are not going back there. So you see that there are elements of fraud which has been confirmed by some of us who can sit down to a strange statement from persons to show that COVID-19, the way it has been classified, is fraud to the world. And what, however, we are not saying people are not dying. Mm. But it so is what's not left, people if you say it's fraud for it the world? It is not left for the world to look for that chemical that has been produced, mm. chemical substance that has been produced, that has leaked to the world and is affecting different countries, it's affecting different races, and it's killing people. We are not saying people are not dying. So when you bring one of those persons that have died, uh -huh. and you not carry out an autopsy or a pathological analysis mm. of what has killed the person, mm. it will give a clue to what we are saying now, and we will know the basis on which that substance was coded. Okay. So if we know the code, yeah. then we have a clue to produce an antidote. Okay, Prof, uh, when he said bring... Um, one of the dead bodies yes. that has been killed by coronavirus. Mm. You said a hey, hair. I didn't quite. What was the excitement <laughs> about? What, what would you achieve with that in, 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 in engaging this issue properly? Uh, first and foremost, let me correct my colleague. The presenter has told us that what killed the people is what? <laughs> respiratory <laughs> what? <laughs> so perhaps he has carried out the autopsy. <laughs> so that is a way forward already. No, no, because, because is there the public domain? We've been told that. Um, we have about four deaths. No, who told you? The federal government said who so. Who told you? Through the Nigeria Center, National Center for Disease Control. Oh, so, right. I have my source. Okay. So, Prof, carry on. I want to appreciate you for having your source. <laughs> and this question has also been answered by your program of yesterday. Okay. Those that listen to Van Arantan in the afternoon. Mm. The, the, the president or the chairman of NME was called upon yesterday. And he said... They are not aware of what is happening. Mm. Just like what my colleague has said, in China, you have China, U.S., hundreds of thousands, or thousands of people dying. Mm. And in Nigeria, we just have five as of today. And people are leaving Nigeria for where you have mass deaths. And if, let's go back, based on what you said, you have your source, that they die of respiratory distress. 
Fine. I think the solution has been proffered. Yes. Two in Nigeria, as at yesterday, 33 had been discharged, infected, yes. treated, yes. And, and discharged. Yes. And discharged. Yes. Yes. What do they use in treating them? And yet you keep on telling us there is no solution we to have, that. We, we heard of chloroquine. I don't know how to No, that. please don't be. Be sure of yourself. Let me pursue them. Let me pursue them. Let me pursue them. Let me pursue them. All right. If you just join us, it's the TMI Monday. I've been talking with uh, Professor Cyril Otoy here, Professor of Genetics and Animal Breeding, as well as Professor Josiah O. All right, thank you again for staying with us on TMI as we conclude our discussion segment with Professor Cyril and Professor Josiah here with us. We are here with us. Uh, Prof, we don't have much time. I know we would have had uh, a lot of talking points, but quickly, um, what are your solution lines in terms of what can be done? We can't deny the fact that people are dying and there is a virus, even though you feel that there is more to it than me the eye in terms of what is there in the public space. So let me begin with uh, Professor Tussan. <clears throat> Based on the revelation so far, mm. I will advise, apart from the normal science, the said wash hands and the rest, I will advise every one of us to take warm water because that will automatically tends to melt the mucus, supposedly said it increases, and that will equally wash it off for now. Two, we should also consider could there be anything that can lead to a uh, bronchodilator? We have all these things, all these herbs that can assist in bronchodilators and what have you. For instance, they have also profiled lemon because from their pH, between 5.5 and 8.2 is the pH of the coronavirus. Anything more than that will not be convenient for it. And that is why they suggest or we want to believe that when you take warm water, the moment you wash it from the throat and it get to the stomach, that, will, that is the end of the virus. Okay. So warm water, is, uh, is, I will encourage that for now. Okay. And taking things like lemon. Is, is this based on your personal... No, the revelation so far. Based on the information... The revelation so far in, from in the... the yes, yes. Okay. All right. All right, uh, Professor Siri. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> We have seen a situation where the world is experiencing poisoning, okay? Chemical poisoning. It has been designed in such a way that there must be contact. So the first thing I will advise is this. Nobody should be allowed to travel to troubled zone. Troubled zone means that thing has been produced and they have target and it has been sent out. So when you go into those trouble zones, there is possibility for you to acquire it. Like when they said wash hand, I did ask. I said, why washing only the hand? <laughs> why don't you tell the people to take several bathing, maybe in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening? As much as you can do, bathe. Then the clothes you wear can be a source of moving virus. Virus now, remember, is not a living thing, mm. but a chemical substance. Mm. The clothes you wear can carry it. The shoes on your leg can carry it. The wristwatch you wear, mm. and you mm. pull it off, and you don't have anything to do with it, can carry it. So nobody should go to troubled zone so that you don't end up as a vector or as somebody who is now transporting it back okay. to areas where it does not exist. Mm. Because, one, it is not because of the standard of our health facility that we are not experiencing it. No, it's because Africa, per se, is not a target zone. But most of the countries that are experiencing it in Africa results from people going to those target zones and coming back with that virus. Okay. Well, um, time is it's, uh, not very friendly today. Not because um, time wanted to be that way, because of some of the technical issues we had earlier uh, that's why it was pretty difficult because the next line of conversation will be on the whole issue surrounding vaccination
And then we also have issues surrounding the 5G network Good. launch, where <laughs> people say, well, there is a correlation between COVID-19 and 5G. Others have said, well, it's not possible because that also cannot stand the test of time as it relates to basic science of electromagnetism, but uh, electromagnetic radiation as it were. But uh, that will be for today. Hopefully, next week, Monday, we'll have you guys back so we can talk more about no that. No problem. Um, I have, I have the, the contacts of uh, a panelist here. Uh, Professor Cyril uh, can be reached on 080-3344-7416. And uh, Professor Josiah can be reached on 080-3408-4016. Uh, if you need a contact to get more information, you can also reach me and then on itv radio and we'll be able to make this information available to you well that's much time with so i thank you so much for your time prof. no problem thank you. Our profs thank you for your time we'll take a short break when we return we'll be talking with dr brightons it's the tmi monday with you sincerely